Hello. All right. So now we're going to talk about when Mercury is said to be proud or in the Garvita Vashta or, you know, Garvita just means proud, basically. Um, so in a nutshell, all the things that Mercury represents and signifies, the native who's born with Mercury in the Garvita Vashta is a native who's born with that Mercury in a great state, a great condition of it is going to be proud of all the things that it signifies and represents. Now, um, before we go into that too much, here is, uh, here is the North Indian chart. Aries is always here, you know, Taurus, Gemini, etc. So this is Virgo. And um, when Mercury is in the Garvita state, this is whenever a planet is in its Mula Tricona or exaltation place. For most planets, those are two different signs. But for Mercury, Mercury is actually only exalted in the first 15 degrees. And then the next uh, five degrees is his Mula Tricona. So Mercury is actually proud when it's in those first 20 degrees of Virgo. And so that's, that's, that's very simple. So basically, anytime you see Mercury in Virgo, and even if it's past that, still in its own sign, which is very, very close to being proud. It's uh, when a planet is in its own home, it's said to be svashta or self-abiding and content, which is very good. And um, it just means one is very solid and secure and confident and strong in all the things of that graha. So really, if Mercury is in anywhere in Virgo, right off the bat, you can say this person is going to be very proud of all the things that Mercury rules in their life. They're going to be proud of their craftsmanship. They're going to be proud of their communication ability. They're going to be proud of their speech. They're going to be proud of their oratorical prowess. You know, they're going to be proud of how, how they network, how they, they're going to have a great sense of humor. They're going to be proud of their, their wit. Um, and this is a healthy pride. This is not like a really arrogant type of proud, uh, pride. So we don't mean, you know, pride can actually be a sin. It's a, not a great thing. You know, um, pride cometh before a fall. It's what the Bible says. And fascinatingly, all the planets except um, two, I think it's just Saturn. No, there's only like one or two planets that are not, that actually uh, don't become proud before they become fall. So I actually feel that that biblical quote is, is an astrological quote. Um, there is a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that's heavily astrological um, in its symbolism. And so that saying, pride cometh before a fall. Um, <clears throat> that is an astrological saying. But when I'm talking about here with this pride of Ashti, it's not like that over-the-top sense of pride. It's more like just a healthy security and self-esteem. And, and they're basically going to be proud of the karma connected to that planet. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, it's, it's kind of just like all the things that you know, Mercury represents being really efficient and doing everything with skill and efficiency. So they're going to be a more efficient person, a very skillful per skillful person. Um, yeah, and like they're really going to be good at managing, uh, like managing like the details. You know, um, they're going to be a great manager. They're going to be very detail oriented, very discerning. Um, they're going to be really good at like. Uh, it's like Mercury is that plant that you need to really do all the little things in life to deal with all the details. Um, and also Mercury is sort of that planet that makes one get a good deal for themselves more so than Venus, the other Rajasic planet, which is more looking for a win-win situation. Mercury wants to just, he kind of just wants him to win the game. So that's where we also see some of those negative sides of Mercury, where it can be a little bit of a trickster, a swindler, a hustler in some ways. Um, but, and that could still be happening if Mercury is proud, depending on other things, it could definitely still be happening. Um, but in general, they're, and then they're going to be proud of how they tricked people. They're going to be proud of how they were a con artist, even, you know what I mean? They're going to feel like they did really, they were just the best con artist if they have this Mercury proud. Um, and so they get great deals. Uh, Mercury is kind of the plan of like playing the game of life. And so they play the game of life very well. Um, they, you know, they play the game of commerce very well. Commerce is actually a, a word that literally com means with and merce comes from Mercury. So literally the word commerce means to be with Mercury. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Um, merchant, mercantile, merchandise, all these words actually come from Mercury. Um, so 
they're like they're really good at working the system, but more so for themselves than for others. Um, so they can have a high high IQ, but maybe not high EQ or emotional intelligence. Or that's that's another realm. That's not Mercury's realm. But in 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 the realm of Mercury, they will be very proud, and they really will do things like better and more efficiently than others most of the time. But is that the lesson that they're here to learn or not? The rest of the chart really explains all of that. So that's all I'm going to say about Mercury being in the proud state. And then more examples will be forthcoming. Okay, so examples of Mercury in the Garbita Vashta. Here we have the chart of J.K. Rowling. Notice that Mercury rules the 11th cusp of money and income and getting a paycheck. So this is one, this is like the highest paid author of all time or something like that. <clears throat> I don't know exactly the statistics or figures, but JK Rowling is a very, very successful author. So you notice that, and if you know um, the Gemini techniques, Moon, Venus, and Mercury, are that is a writing combination. So being an author, she could be very proud of the work she did as an author compared to a lot of other authors. Um, notice also that, like I was saying, Mercury has to do with being just more efficient at all things, and he's the most adaptable planet. So this will make people with Mercury proud. They'll just be a lot better at doing a lot of things. They'll be a lot more skillful, a lot more efficient, and a really weak Mercury person is not as uh, efficient at doing so many things. You know, they might be really good at one thing, but they're not good at, they're not just, uh, they can't switch gears that easily and do another thing um, that they might need to do at that time. Um, another interesting really, and then another interesting note about this chart is that Mercury rules the eighth cusp of um, the occult and magic, and Jupiter is also planned that has to do with writing. And so you see Mercury, she's proud of how she took this Rahu, Jupiter, and the eighth house placement, which is not really always that great or desirable, and she turned that into um, an amazing series of books about magic and the eighth house and wizardry. You know, Rahu, Jupiter, that's definitely speaking to, you know, in the time of Gemini, a school for wizards. You get it? Um, Gemini is to do with schooling, education, um, Jupiter, wizardry, all that stuff. Yeah. So this is very neat. You can see how even the topics and the themes that she would write about are shown in her chart. And no, and I'm sure it had to do with that proud, exalted Mercury that helped her take all this and manage it and mix it and turn it into something that she could make a lot of money out of, you know, and that's Mercury. He's a synthesizer. He's a manager. Um, Mercury is the planet of the earth element and is exalted in earth sign. And earth is the from the occult standpoint, the, the five elements, you know, earth is the element of mixing and cohesion, everything kind of coming together, mixing in a, in a stable way. So that's one example. This is the chart of B.V. Rahman. So B.V. Rahman had his Mercury also proud and exalted. Um, he was someone who and it's in the seventh house. So that has to do with the public and the impact you leave on the public, the legacy you leave for the public. So he is the only reason I'm here speaking really in many ways is B.V. Rahman is, is a big reason why a lot of Hindu astrology got exposed to the rest of the world. And he did a lot of translation of translating books from Sanskrit or Hindi into um, English. He really did a lot to get Jyotish out there and exposed and contributed a lot um, to the world. And he has a very strong Jupiter as his ruling planet. Um, and it's in a tight aspect with that Mercury. This is a very smart, you know, this is a sharp guy and uh, his translations laid a, left a big impact on the world. And um, we can see that with that seventh house, that Mercury, the Lord of the seventh in the seventh and in a proud state, proud of what he did for his impact on the public. And it's with the ninth Lord too, Mars, the Lord of Scorpio, the occult, and the ninth house, which is wisdom. And, you know, so you can see the Jyotish connections as well there. 
And also to, to do what I was doing with JK Rowley's chart, look how Mercury also rules the moon, another planet of writing. And um, Saturn is also like symbolized old things. So it kind of hints at him carrying on an old tradition and, and preserving writings, the moon of, of an old tradition. That's also his pada. So having the moon, the pada can also make one an author as well. So it's very, very interesting. Um, now let's look at another chart. Mercury can go so many ways. It can make you so many different things. This is David Frawley, the chart of David Frawley, who's a very, very well-known figure in the yoga world. And he was one of the first Westerners uh, to go to India and learn, you know, within the Indian schools and not just be sort of like that dry academic who's looking at India from like a sterile, you know, classroom in the United Kingdom and has never even been there. And it's just not the same really way to, it's not the best way to learn about a culture um, or, a, or a system. So David Frawley is a, um, he's also an expert on language and um, he's, you know, done works on mantra. He did a book on mantra yoga, mantras or mercury. You know, he's, he's done a lot of work with Sanskrit. He's very knowledgeable about Sanskrit. He's knowledgeable about, he's also a great teacher and um, like acharya of just Vedic knowledge in general. He has so much of it, but in a more general all around way. And that's like mercury who is more general and, um, can, can give you all kinds of information. So while I, David Frawley is maybe not the best Jyotishi, I'm not saying that he is. I know people who've gotten readings from him and what they've said and this and that and all that. It's not like I think he's really the best in terms of like a hardcore singular just to Jyotishi. He's like, no, he, he's a pundit. You know, he did some Jyotish. He's done Vastu. He does Ayurveda. He does Mantra Yoga. He, does, he just knows about all these things. So he's more of a good, like, um, well-rounded figure, which Mercury has a lot to do with. Um, so that's really interesting. And, um, oh, and, and then the 11th house, remember the 11th house is titles. So he's been given that title, Pandit, Vamadeva, Shastri and everything. Um, and this is the chart of Neil Armstrong. Well, if you're gonna be the first guy to land on the moon or walk on the moon, if you're gonna be something like that, then yeah, you're probably going to have a proud Mercury because astronauts had to train so much and be like really, uh, you know, have really strong bodies, really efficient bodies that, and had a, you know, as an astronaut, you had to have a well-rounded knowledge of a ton of different subjects. So again, that's like Mercury. So Mercury is his ruling planet and it's, um, and it's in Virgo and that's the fourth house. And it's with Venus, which is interesting because Venus has to do with vehicles um and an, a spaceship is a vehicle um so he could be proud of this one major journey he did in a vehicle with venus um, but also that's not the only interpretation of that neil Ar uh yeah neil armstrong is a good proud mercury figure um and this is another now we're moving into actors and this is charlton heston who is a well-known actor but his mercury is not Exalted or Mula Tricona, it's past that. It's just in its own home. But I thought it would be a good example because it shows that the Mercury is still really strong if it's in its own home or if it's in Gemini. It's just not considered to be that highest level of, of the Garvita state. Hmm. So he is a good, he is an actor who could be proud of his roles as an actor. And he also played some martial roles and we can see that with Mars there. But if you compare it to this chart, Robert De Niro, who's like a legendary actor, we see that it's, um, this De Niro has his Mercury in Mula Tricona. So it's more of the proud state, kind of the next step above. Robert De Niro is, is considered a world, you know, world-class actor and he's done comedy roles. He's done dramas. He's played the good guy. He's played the villain. He's played a lot of different <clears throat> types of people and stuff. And um, yeah, so that's a proud Mercury as well. Mercury rules actors, especially in the type, the types of actors who are not typecasted, who are like real actors who, be, who are like chameleons who can just become different people. Um, Edward Norton is an example I've shown before 
of that. He's a really good example who also has an exalted Mercury and um, like Vincent D'Onofrio or people like that. Robert De Niro is close to that. He's not, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would put him on that level, but he had a proud Mercury and he could definitely be proud of his acting and his, his communication and his skills, a lot of things. Now this is the chart of Bill Murray. I'm not sure if that time is correct, but um, Bill Murray also has an exalted Mercury and he's a very, very well-known actor who could look back on his life and also be proud of the roles he's played. Mercury lets you, a strong Mercury helps you to play your role at any moment with a sense of detachment. And that's, that's important. And um, yeah, so this is a guy who has played, um, you know, Ghostbusters, Caddyshack, you know, like big major movies, and then also played small indie independent films. And, and he's done little dramas and little things that he wanted to do just for fun. And, you know, like Wes Anderson films or things like that. And he is a very, you know, he could, you could say, yeah, he would definitely have a proud Mercury. Um, yeah, so that's all the examples I had. I hope that helps you guys get a feel for proud Mercury. More to come. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know about how you use these in the Vargas, how you apply these. These are dasha sensitive. They will depend on the dashas that you're running and things, how much or how little you'll feel them. Um, and I'll try to keep explaining more and more of that as I go along as well. So hope that helps.